Hey there, everyone. CPO here. And uh, this is first of a couple of videos about the Spirit System Fly Barless Unit. So i um, fortunate enough to have an opportunity to uh, put together some videos on this, get it installed on uh, one of my helis. I decided I'm going to put it on my Align slash Tarot 500. It's going to go in place of my icon that uh, is on there at the moment. So I'm going to pull that off, and I'm going to set this uh, Spirit System Fly Barless unit up. This first video here is just going to be a quick look at the unit, and then where to get the software, uh, the manual, and all that. And then we're going to go ahead and update the firmware on this, because the firmware is out of date already on my unit, I'm assuming. And uh, we want to get that updated to the latest and greatest. But first, really quick... Um, some of you may have heard about this particular fly barless unit. Some of you may have not yet. So let me just give you a quick rundown. Uh, you know, some of the key features, um, it can work fly barless or with a fly bar system as a tail, uh, gyro only, which is kind of nice. Um, it's got self level mode and a rescue mode. And the key here with the rescue is it is the same patented rescue system, bailout system, that Bavarian Demon uses. And to wit, it can also handle inverted bailout. So that's one of the great things about this unit at a price point that is much less than the Bavarian Demon. It can do, like I said, inverted bailout, or you can force it to do a uh, skids down or an upright bailout always. It handles a whole bunch of different type of receiver types. Uh, it can do uh, Spectrum Satellite, S-Bus, Jetty. Uh, it's uh, got vibration analysis and can take an input of three to 15 volts. Does some data logging. Can also be configurable with Bluetooth. There is an Android app uh, out and a Bluetooth module you can get and an iOS app is on the way. It's in development and from what I can tell, pretty close to being done. Anyway, pretty cool. Uh, and we're going to just take a look at it and I'm going to go through the setup with you. All right. So here's the box that the unit comes to me in. Uh, pretty simple packaging, which is just fine uh, for me. These are made in the Czech Republic. So uh, there is a U.S. Uh, retailer and that is uh, a spree model. And then you can get them directly from the company uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, not a lot in the package. Again, the manual is available online. I'll show you where to get that. It does come with some uh, double stick tape here. And it's got, uh, this is the cable for connecting to your computer for firmware updates and a, a few uh, a few connection cables. And that's pretty much it, which quite frankly is all you need. So uh, this is the unit. This is actually an aluminum case. Uh, it's anodized. Mine is black. I've seen some pictures of some red ones, so I'm not sure exactly uh, which ones are black or red or if it really matters. But uh, mine is black or this gray color, and I think it's really cool looking. So uh, I'm happy uh, that I got this color. Uh, pretty simple, easy. There's your Spectrum uh, satellite uh, port. And uh, then with the connection cables, You've got your uh, couple of standard uh, connectors and then a three-headed uh, connector for your standard receiver connection. So um, that's nice that they include those in there. There is a catch. If you're using S-Bus, you need a separate inverter adapter, which I did not get. I neglected to get that. Uh, I normally run S-Bus, but um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and set it up as a standard receiver. And, uh, and then I'll get that S-Bus adapter later. And then this is the cable that you plug it into your computer with. So uh, pretty simple stuff. So uh, just for grins, uh, since I pulled the icon off, here's a quick size comparison between the icon and the Spirit uh, Fly Barless unit. It is noticeably smaller. Uh, and of course, uh, being aluminum, it definitely uh, feels sturdier. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is put it right on top of the uh, tail block here. And I'm going to use the tape that came with it. Uh, I usually use red uh, 3M, the gray, uh, with the red tape uh, on it. But I'm just going to use this that came in the box. We're going to see you know, if I have any problems with this stock uh, double stick tape. As always, uh, I tend to uh, use a 99% alcohol to uh, clean off the surfaces before I stick anything to them. 
gets all the other gunk off. So I'm going to do that both on the helicopter and also on the fly barless unit. All righty. Let's get this tape on there. Nice and centered. And you can see the size, the width of that tape is just perfect. All right. And uh, now we're going to stick this on the helicopter. And I'm just setting it in place here first because it's really critical, as with all fly barless systems, to get them uh, exactly perpendicular or parallel to the uh, to the axis. Um, so you don't want them crooked at all. So I just use my caliper to uh, make sure everything is exactly where I want it. Once I feel like I've got it uh, in place, press it down, lock it in, and we're good to go. And uh, you can see on the back of the 500, it fits really nicely and uh, plenty of room, actually, if you uh, choose to use the Spectrum receiver. Uh, that port's clearly visible right there. And I like the fact that the uh, servo connections come out the top. And it doesn't matter if they're in the back or in the front. Uh, it can be rotated either way. So as I mentioned, uh, I'm not using SBUS for this. Uh, my FreeSky X6R can do uh, standard or SBUS. So normally I use SBUS, but again, I'm just going to use standard for now because I don't have that adapter. And then plug in the system cable uh, so that we can connect this to the computer to do the um, firmware update. And you'll notice I don't have the servos plugged in. It's recommended not to plug in the servos until you've got your initial setup done. So I just have everything talking to the receiver, but no servos plugged in. And then here's what it looks like when you power it up. It's got that nice sort of pulsing red light uh, while it's initializing and then goes solid red once it's fully initialized. All right, let's go uh, to the computer now. So this is uh, spirit-system. Dot com. And as you can see up at the top right of the page, you can change the language to English. If you're an English speaker like me, uh, I don't understand <laughs> pretty much any other language. So uh, I'm going to go straight to the download page here. You can see there's firmware, uh, the latest firmware, the software with uh, thank you, Spirit System, for making Mac or Linux um, or Windows, and as you can see, Android's there now. But uh, I use a Mac, so not very many units will let you do that. And then, of course, you can get the manual, the most current manual right here on the website. And the manual is pretty simple, uh, but it should uh, have pretty much everything you need to get going. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. It gives you some wiring uh, ideas, which you'll also get when you go through the wizard. You'll get these same images uh, on the setup wizard. But as you can see, it's got standard uh, receiver spectrum satellite, including the ability to bind the spectrum satellites. Uh, you can take a PPM, you can take a SBUS, uh, an SRXL. Uh, so uh, all kinds of options there. Just remember, if you're doing SBUS, you're going to need the, uh, the adapter. Uh, by the way, the change log is right here if you want to see uh, what's new. So 1.1.0 is the current firmware uh, as of the recording of this video, which is uh, beginning of March. So I'm going to grab that firmware. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is uh, grab the software for the Mac. And that's this right here, settings.app. Now, I'm going to show you this uh, because I have my system set up this way. I know this baffles a lot of people. But if you can't open something uh, from the web, an app that you downloaded, you might have to go in and make a security uh, setting adjustment. So I just go into security and then uh, say open anyway, and that will bypass my security settings, which prevent downloaded apps from opening automatically. So safety check, and I just leave it that way. Um, but if you run into a problem, that's how you fix it. So there is a demo mode. So if you're not plugged in, you can go into demo mode and check things out. This is the software that you will use uh, not only to set up, but also here, as you can see, to update your firmware. Uh, but this has all of the setup uh, and configuration settings for the unit as well. All right, so now I'm connected. 
I'm going to go back in and reopen the application. And you can tell right away I get a pop-up that says that my firmware is out of date, basically. So that's a nice bonus. It checks that. And you can see uh, in red there, it says connected and what my current firmware version is. And uh, including the release notes for the firmware version you have installed, not the update. So I'm going to go to the update screen and then go select the uh, file uh, that I downloaded from the page. It's this .bin file. And uh, load that up. And it's quite easy. Just, uh, you know, click this button here. Bam. And you are ready to go. And it's basically uh, updating the firmware. Can't get much easier. So they do recommend restarting the unit. Um, I went ahead and closed down the software and reopened it and then you know restarted the unit as well with unplugging the battery. And now you can see uh, it shows the firmware version is 1.1.0, which is the current version. And I no longer got an alert. Let's check out the wizard really quick. Just for grins, I'm not going to go through the setup right now, but see here, I do have a uh, standard uh, receiver set up on this right now. It shows me how my connection should be and actually, quite frankly, how they are right now. And um, you have to go in and make your connection. Uh, so just click connect and then it will uh, connect to the unit and you'll see it changes the status to connected. And then now you can see as I move my sticks on the transmitter, I'm getting uh, movement on all the right channels in the unit. So there's some things that we have to do here. And uh, I'm not going to go through that right now. But I did just want to show you um, how to get started. There is a support forum there on that main page, which uh, you can take advantage of if you have some questions. There's been a lot of great support. Uh, there's some great support on the forums as well. But any rate, uh, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.